friends, welcome or welcome back. My name is Justina and here I like to make, create, and inspire fun art things with you through my DIYs. As you see by the title, I have 11 St. Patrick's Day DIYs and decor pieces for you that is a blast from the past that I know that you will absolutely love. If you are new here, I hope you stick around by hitting that big red subscribe button down below. If you aren't, welcome back and I really hope you enjoyed today's video. So with all that being said, let's just jump right into it and let's art today. To start off with today's DIYs, I want to make over this little house that I purchased from the Dollar Tree. I originally used it for a gingerbread house during the Christmas season. I just sanded it down so that I can repurpose it for St. Patrick's Day. I want to give it a nice fresh look, so I'm going to give it a nice thick layer of my Folk Art Home Decor chalk paint in the color Sheepskin. After that was completely dry, I wanted to give this house some stripes and I wanted them to be green. So I'm using my Folk Art Home Decor chalk paint in the color Irish Green. So to create my stripes, I am using masking tape once again from Dollar Tree and I'm just laying it down onto the house using a little piece of tape to be my little spacer in between each layer so that they are even as possible and hopefully straight. Then I'm just adding the paint right on the places that aren't taped down and I give it about two coats of that paint. After the paint was completely dried, I just removed the tape and then I wanted to give it a nice sanding down to give it more of a rustic look. So that's what I'm doing here, just scuffing up the edges and the front of the house. Next, I'm adding these poster stickers that say 17 for the date of St. Patrick's Day. And then on the side of it, I was going to put March using these sticker letters from Dollar Tree. After I was done, I noticed that I didn't really like it so I wanted to start all over again but this is how it looks if I was to keep it just how it is. So to remedy that I just added more of that Irish color green right on top of the stripes making a nice thin layer of that paint just so I have a fresh start. After that part was completely dry, I wanted to add some details using these window clings from Dollar Tree. I love picking out these window clings because there's so much you can do with them. I picked out this little gnome friend right here and to adhere him down to the house, I'm just using some Mod Podge on the back of it and then I will add more Mod Podge on the top of it so that it was nice and sealed. To finish off this little house, I added the same poster numbers that I did before, the number 17 right above my little gnome friend. Then I added some three leaf clovers from the same window cling packed, added a layer of Mod Podge to seal everything, and that completes this DIY. For this DIY, I wanted to use the same house, but only the inside of the house for another St. Patty's Day decor piece. I also wanted to use some of these pots from Dollar Tree. They usually take them out during St. Patrick's Day season and you get five in a pack, which is a great deal because you can do so much with these little pots here. Now, the pot didn't fit exactly flush up against the house, so I had to cut it down the center using just a pair of scissors. They are a little bit thick on the bottom so you might have to use a little pressure but nonetheless I did get to cut it straight in half. Here are the two halves after I cut them. Now I only need one half of the cauldron and I did think I was going to use a handle but then I decided against it and as you see here it fits flush up against the house. Before I add the cauldron in I did want to add some of this green moss that I purchased from Dollar Tree on the bottom of the house because I wanted my little cauldron to look like it was in the middle of a forest. I then added some hot glue to the outer edges of the cauldron and then pressed it firmly up against the house and then I continue adding some moss on the bottom of it. Next, I took some Dollar Tree golden ribbon and I placed it in the center of the cauldron. I thought this could act as little coins in the background, but then I end up covering it using Dollar Tree's bigger coins in their St. Patrick's Day collection. 
I then started hot gluing all of the coins up in the middle of the cauldron and all around that gold ribbon that I placed and a couple around the pot and that completes this DIY. For my next DIY, I wanted to make over this gnome that I purchased from Dollar Tree. It was in their Valentine's Day collection, but I want to turn it into a little St. Patrick's Day gnome. Now, comment below if you remember what we named this little fella here, extra brownie points if you remember. Now, I wanted to make him over first going in with my folk art home decor chalk paint in the color Irish green. I will start painting on that. I do start off with his hat and his clothing and I do give it about two coats. Now while I am painting if you are new here friends I hope you stick around by hitting that big red subscribe button down below but make sure you click on the bell notification so that YouTube can always notify you when I upload a new video plus I would love for you to be part of my virtual art family. Here is how our little gnome friend is looking after the paint had time to completely dry. Now, since I was running a little low on orange paint, I had to mix up, up my own, and that's what I did over here. Once again, this is acrylic paint so that it dries really quickly and it soaks into the little ceramic, and I will paint all of his hair using that orange paint. Once that had time to dry, I am going in with my Posca paint marker in the color dark green and I'm adding on the details. Now this ceramic had little hearts all around the hat and I'm making them into three leaf clovers by adding little hearts onto the side and adding a stem. Then I will just color them in and I will continue this process until his whole hat is covered in these three leaf clovers. After I was done with the three leaf clovers on his hat, I took that same Posca paint marker and started coloring in the bigger heart that he is holding on to. And then I used the same Posca paint marker in that same dark green and start filling in his shoes as well. Once I was done with that, I took a lighter Posca paint marker in green and filled in the little heart in the center. Then I took a gold Posca paint marker and started outlining the three leaf clovers that I made onto his hat and then use it to add little details onto the heart and fill in the gloves of my gnome. To finish up this gnome, I wanted to add one more detail, which is a little pom-pom to place on the tip of his hat, and he is completed. For my next DIY, I wanted to make little St. Patrick's Day words using these alpha tiles that I purchased, I believe, from Dollar General. They were only a couple dollars, and you get all of these pieces. They are like Scrabble pieces, so... <laughs> You can make a bunch of words using these tiles. I flip them all over to find all of the letters that I need and I'm going to spell out lucky for my first word and then for my second word I'm going to spell out St. Patrick's Day. After I have all of my words that I'm going to use, I am going to now attach them using my hot glue gun. Now I just add a nice generous amount on the side of the letters and then press the next letter right into the glue, pressing down firmly and making sure not to glue it onto the table. And then I will continue this process with the rest of the letters. After I had my word completed, they do stand up on their own, but they're pretty flimsy and they fall easily. So I am using my little cubes here that I purchased from Dollar Tree. Once again, I'm using my hot glue to attach it to the back of the word. I continue this process with the second word and that completes this DIY.
Another easy DIY for St. Patty's Day is to make over the gnomes that they carry every year at Dollar Tree. They usually come a little bit beat up and the paint job is not always that great, at least at my Dollar Tree. However, they are the perfect size for a tear tray and they come in different positions. They're either sitting down or standing up and I just think they're so adorable. So I want to uh, recreate these by giving them a fresh coat of paint. Uh, these two gnomes are going to be pretty similar. They're going to be little brothers and I don't believe that I have named these two. So if you want to leave me a comment down below and help me give these little guys a name, I would deeply appreciate it. Right now I'm just going in with a light brown color and painting on their skin tone. For my yellow shirt gnome friend here, I wanted to paint his pants and his hat using my folk art home decor chalk paint in the color Irish green. I really love this green, especially around springtime and for St. Patrick's Day. For this gnome, I went in with a different green color, still in my folk art home decor chalk paint, and I'm just painting his hat in this color. To make the project go a little faster for myself, I do go back and forth with each gnome, painting one, and then once that was done, I then go on to the next gnome and paint that as well. Now, as you see here, I really like the yellow shirt on this gnome, so I just gave it a nice fresh coat using my yellow in my folk art home decor chalk paint. Now with this gnome, I did not like his blue shirt, so I am going over it with my castle color, same in my folk art home decor chalk paint, and giving it a nice thick coat. Now I do wanna mention all of the original videos will be linked down in the description box below. If you wanna see all of these DIYs and more details, don't forget to check out down there. If you wanna see more pictures and more little snippets of DIYs that I do, don't forget to check out my other social medias. All those links are down there as well. So as you just saw, I did give each gnome a fresh coat of white paint on their beards and the hair. And lastly, all I have to do is paint a fresh coat of black paint on the boots and that completes this DIY. For a really simple and easy DIY, pick up two of these terracotta pots from Dollar Tree. Actually, two come in one pack. You only need one pack of them, which I think is a great steal for $1.25. And as you see here, I'm just giving it a nice thick coat of white acrylic paint. After that was nice and dry, I then took a black Posca paint marker and started drawing lines on the side of the pot. And then I marked little X's on where I want to fill in those lines so that I have a black and white stripe pot. Then I just took some regular black acrylic paint and painted over all of the X's that I placed inside of those lines so we have a nice black and white stripe pot. I then took that same black Posca paint marker after I was done and then added little dashes onto the side because I thought it was still just a little flat and I wanted to give it a little bit more detail did sit that to the side so that it can dry completely and then I wanted to add a little bit detail for this since this is St. Patty's Day. I found this St. Patty's Day tinsel hat at Dollar Tree and I'm just sprucing it up by adding a little bit of coins to the side and a three leaf clover and then I place that right on top of the pot and that completes this DIY. For my next DIY, I am going to make a nice St. Patrick's Day sign. I have two signs from Dollar Tree. One is from their fall collection and the other one is from their Halloween collection. I am just using the cauldron in the center of that sign and then I'm using the square sign as the base of my sign. I wanted to cover it using this glittery rainbow paper that I had in my collection and I'm just going to cut it down to size and glue it into place.
So since I am just using the cauldron out of this sign, I'm taking my box cutter and giving it a nice decent amount of pressure and cutting around the outer rim of the frame that it's in and then flipping it back and forth until it pops out. Then I took a pair of scissors and cut off the excess wood that was on the top. Now I wanted to paint my cauldron but also give it another form of texture on top to hide that trick or treat sign. So I picked up another black piece piece of texture scrapbooking paper that I had in my crafting stash. I traced out the cauldron and then cut it down to size. After everything was painted and cut it out, I then took a Gorilla Glue stick and added it to the back of the scrapbooking paper so that it can attach down to the wooden piece. I did also add a little bit of hot glue to the outer edges so that everything is attached down nicely. To give my sign a little bit more bling, I'm adding this ribbon onto the outer edges and then attaching it using my hot glue gun. Then I will attach my cauldron to the middle of the sign using my hot glue gun as well. I then added some gold coins that I purchased from Dollar Tree all on the top edge of my cauldron. I really wanted this to look like it was overflowing with coins and that it was really full. I did want to add some wordage to my sign, so to remedy that, I'm using this other sign from Dollar Tree that has a whole bunch of words on it, and I'm using my box cutter to cut it out. I am using the ruler just to help me make a straight line, and then I will flip it around and pop it out. Then after I got the words that I wanted, I am going to attach them to my sign using my hot glue gun. I did add three more coins to the bottom of my sign and then took a white Posca paint marker and outlined the cauldron just to give it a little bit of a pop and that completes this DIY. For my next DIY, it is another sign. I'm going to use this 11 by 14 picture frame and this wooden truck. This DIY was really popular back in the day. I know a lot of you like these wooden trucks in your home decor, so I wanted to add it. I personally do not decorate with these wooden trucks, but this was really a fun DIY that I did. I am painting this truck using my folk art home decor chalk paint in the color Irish green. I then took my Java brown chalk paint and started painting above the tires and the bed of the truck and then I started taking a paper towel and removing the excess so that it can be more of a stain rather than a paint. I then go in with black acrylic paint and paint in both of the tires. I did set that to the side to dry completely and while that is drying, I will work on my picture frame. I did take out the glass and set that to the side because I won't be using it for this DIY. I took some hot glue and started gluing down the piece of paper that comes with the frame but on the white side. Next, I'm taking this rainbow duct tape that I purchased from Michaels and I'm placing it down all on the back side of the frame so that that can be my rainbow backing for this DIY. After that was completed and my truck was completely dry, I started adding some gold coins to the rims of my truck. Then I will hot glue my truck down into place. To decorate my sign even more, I am using Dollar Tree's foam three leaf clovers and coins for the back of my truck. I am attaching them using my hot glue gun and I'm just putting them sporadically in the bed of the truck. Friends, if you are enjoying today's video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. It really does help out my channel and it lets me know that you enjoy my DIYs. I did want to add some wordage to my sign, so I took another word from that other um, sign from Dollar Tree and hot glued it diagonally in the corner and as you see here I did add a cauldron to the top of my little pile here and added a little bit of stitching all over my truck and that completes this DIY.
To make this really cute sign, I'm going to use a leftover piece that I had on hand from a Dollar Tree sign, flip it over and paint it using my folk art home decor chalk paint in the color Sheep Skin. After that had time to completely dry, I am just taking a regular pencil and sketching in a three leaf clover to the best of my ability. I did have to go over it a couple times just to get the look I am going for and wanted it to be in the center of this little square sign. Once I was done with that, I took some of Dollar Tree's floral moss once again and started adding it to my sign. Now I did add a little bit of hot glue, place the moss right on top of that hot glue and then remove the excess. Once I have a nice pile down, I then took a pair of scissors and started cutting it down into the shape of the three leaf clover, getting as close as I can down to the board, but making sure not to go too far down so you can see the white showing through. I will continue this until the whole three leaf clover is full. To finish up my sign, I am just adding a gold coin once again from Dollar Tree and hot gluing it to the center of my three leaf clover. I will then take a green Posca paint marker and add my little dashes to the outer rim of the sign and that completes this DIY. Once again, here is a quick overview of all the DIYs that were in today's videos. Now, if you would like to see a more detailed version of the original videos, they will be linked down in the description box below. Remember, if you are new here, I hope you stick around by hitting that big red subscribe button down below, but make sure to click on the bell notification so that YouTube can always notify you when I upload a new video. Plus, I would love for you to be part of my virtual art family. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button. It really does help out my channel. Also, don't forget to leave me a message in the comment section about if you know the original name to my known friend. Also, I need your help naming my two known brothers here as as well. If you would like to help support my page, don't forget to check out my Buy Me A Coffee page. That link is down in the description box below. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and as always, I will see you in the next one.